Let's open up in prayer first. The Holy Spirit is here. And your hearts are open. And he has something for you. Remain open to what he wants to do in you. And Lord, we thank you. We just give this time over to you. I've given him all for you. Praise you, Father. Oh, thank you for all your prayers for us in Israel. They were all answered. Every prayer was answered. I, I, when we decided to go, I don't do things like this. I decided, let's go to Israel. Sid Roth is having a trip to Israel. Let's go. I, I just don't do that. And I said, okay, he just doesn't do that. <laughs> and a month before we went, I'm thinking, oh my God, what did I do? <laughs> I got to travel for a long time. And you know what? People prayed over us. Pastor Mike prayed and he prayed that all our needs would be met yes. and that we would have a life changing experience. And that happened. All of that happened. <laughs> My main prayer was I hope there's enough bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> And there was. <laughs> but I wanted to give Mike a couple. I wanted to give Mike some time to share what he experienced in Israel before I start preaching. Uh, El Shalom. <laughs> it was a life changing experience for me. We saw so many things that were walking in the steps of in the Holy Man itself was amazing. You have a background in archaeology like me, you really have it. <laughs> aside from that, I mean, the spirit broke things up. We went with Sid Rod's ministry, and there were like 10 buses to over 400 people. And it was like one big family. And all, every bus had somebody from his show.
Um, and when we received that message, I knew in my heart it's something I wanted to bring back. So I'm bringing that message to you along with uh, my own interjections for it. So really what this is, is not only a message, but it's going to be an impartation for what God wants to do in you, in this church, and in this community, and outward. And when we, when we got there, it was so amazing. We met people from all nations, all, all over the world we met people. Every night we sat with a different group of believers who were from, whether they were from Zimbabwe, whether they were from the UK, Australia, uh, New Zealand, um, Lima, Peru, uh, Mexico, and on and on, and then all of the states in between from California to Connecticut and, and, and wherever. And we just hit a, a, a marvelous time. And on each of our buses was not only the, the guy who was giving us the background for what we were seeing, but Sid Roth had his, um, his staff sitting there with us on the bus, and we would get vignettes and teachings all through, and they were powerful, just very powerful. Well, after we had gone to the Wailing Wall, uh, and this was the first day of our tour, we had gone to the Wailing Wall, and the Bread of Life Church is in the Wailing Wall. Yeah. You guys are in there. And when I touch the Wailing Wall, I know it's not so much that we're looking to an icon or any sort but we're looking to our God or a symbol of what our God is doing in us. And I just laid hands on that, and I could just feel the presence of God. Tremendous presence. And Mike was on one side, I was on the other side, because I had to go to one side, and I had to go to the other side. When we came back out, we came through an arch. There was a big arch, and then there was the steps that I was talking to you about. And it was the temple steps. Um, the rooms, actually, and they're called the Stairs of Ascent. Um, they're called Stairs of Ascent, and we sat on the Stairs of Ascent. Now, when they repair some of the rooms, they'll tell you what is the original rooms and what is the uh, repair. Uh, so a lot of the rooms is there, the temple is, you know, um, disarray. But they were the same steps that Jesus, at the age of 12, walked up uh, when he went and as an adult was teaching. And we were sitting on those stairs and we were looking out at Jerusalem and the mountains, just surrounding that area and just taking in the magnificence of who our Lord was. And this message came forth. And it, he talked about, uh, two, two people talked, one was Kenyon um, Bridges, the other was uh, uh, Dr. Um, I don't know why all of a sudden his name just went to Dennis, him, say. Dennis Clark. D yes, Dennis Clark, Dr. Clark, and his wife Jennifer. And the message that they, they set forth was this there are three significant things about the temple. And I want us to understand that not only what's significant to the temple is significant to our home church. Okay, and it's three things. The significance of the temple was that it was a place of cleansing. And it was a place of impartation and teaching. And it is a place of ascension. <laughs> so that has those things. Now, as we were sitting there, he went through the cleansing. It is a place of cleansing. Psalms 120 to 134 are called the Psalms of Ascent. And the pilgrims, when they would bring their sacrifices to the temple, they would sing from the Psalms, 120 to 134. They would sing. And what they would do is they would have their lamb washed down at the bottom of the stairs, and then they would carry their lamb that was washed, and they would walk up the stairs of ascent and sing Psalms 120 to 134 and before they offered their sacrifice of the lamb. Now we know that Jesus Christ is the Passover lamb. And that Jesus was washed in the Jordan River. He was baptized. And when John the Baptist saw him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who came to, to save us from our sins. 
So Jesus, the Passover lamb, was washed in the Jordan, not because he needed to be cleansed, but because he was fulfilling all righteousness for what the Passover lamb would do. And by the same token, we are living sacrifices. And we're told <clears throat> in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, that to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. We are those sacrifices. We are living sacrifices and the true worshipers when we worship in truth. Do you know when you've heard that the sacrifice of praise? You've never heard sacrifice of worship, have you? Why? Because we are the sacrifice. When we worship before God, we let everything go. We are cleansed in his presence because our hearts cry always is that we would be cleansed. God created a clean heart in me, renew in me a right spirit. And when I worship, Lord, let me worship you for who you are. And when we begin worshiping in that way, the things that we want gone from our life fall off because we are in the presence of God. Amen? We had a worship today that was just amazing. And you know what? We're going to go deeper and closer in that kind of worship. And we're going to find the glory cloud. That within that glory cloud, amen, we are going to be cleansed. We are going to be purified. We are going to be those living sacrifices. And we are going to receive impartation. Yeah. And impartation. Glory. We are going to be carriers of the glory. Amen. In that cleansing, that we need to understand that also in John chapter 7, verse 38, it says, Whoever believes in me, the scriptures have said, rivers of living water will flow from within or flow from within your heart. We have the living waters within us. And during worship, these living waters wash over us. It washes away the worries. It washes away the concerns. It washes away everything. So when we're in the presence of God, all we have is his presence. And where there is his presence, total freedom. Amen. And folks, we need the church. We need the body of believers to worship with. You can't make it out there on your own. You need us. We need to worship together. For when you come into the local church, the local body of believers, after we have worshipped, after we have been cleansed, after we have given our bodies as a living sacrifice, when we walk out those doors, we should be different. Yeah. Amen? Amen. We should walk out those doors. Don't pick up what God just took off of you, what he delivered from you from, what he has released you from. From when you leave here and you go out those doors, leave it at the cross. And Lord was showing me that arch that we had walked in. There were things when I came to Israel, I said, I want to be new. I want to be a different person. I want something life-changing, God. I don't want to come back to Buffalo the same. I want to be different. And when I walk through those arches, Lord, these are the things I want to see fall off my life. These are the things I want to be delivered from. These are the things I want to be set free. And when I walked through that arch, I knew that it was set. It stayed. Now by faith, I move forward into what God is going to do. The second thing is, well, before I go there, the Word is living water. It washes our minds through the living water. 
So as living sacrifices, we are washed in the water of the word, which takes us to the next step, which is impartation and teaching. It is here. This is a place of impartation and teaching. It is here where you hear the word of God. And the last time I preached, I talked about how we can get revelation and receive transformation through the revelation. When we receive when we receive the word and you receive a revelation and you are sitting in your seats, God wants to impart to you revelation. He wants to make that word real to your heart. Yes. And when he makes that word real to your heart, you can grow in the things that he wants you to grow in. Yes. Yeah. Our revelation can only be as much as our understanding of who God is. Our revelations can't exceed our knowledge of God unless we have the knowledge of God. And we receive the knowledge of God through his word, through what you hear in the local church, what the pastors are preaching, what the Holy Spirit has laid on your heart. So impartation. God wants to take you to another level. Yes! With revelation, he can take you to another level. Amen? Now, one of the things we need to have is we need to, and this is what I saw today, is receiving. In order for us to move forward, we have to receive. And, and Nida was saying when we were praying, rejoicing is acknowledging that you have received. But receiving also is laying hold of that which is yours. That which is yours. Jesus paid for everything we have. It's already paid for. It has been bought with the blood and paid for by the blood. So everything that we receive is ours. Just as been said, healing, health, finances, and we can go on and on and on, that our Father has given those things to us, and we need to receive it. We need to lay hold on that which is ours. Once we get the revelation, we can move to the next step, which is ascension. The church is a place of ascension. What we need to do, and I'm going to read from Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2, and this is one of the Psalms of the Sent, and it says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Maker, the Lord, the Maker of the heavens and the earth. We need to lift our eyes to a higher vision. God is calling us to see things in a higher vision. We need to lift up our eyes from the things that are below. We need to have a better vision. And what we need to know is that God wants us to go to the next level. Do you ever notice with the stairs here, there are risers with each step. When you get a revelation and you are ascending, you are going a riser, you are going higher, you are going higher, and you are seeing things from God's point of view, you are seeing things how God wants you to see them because you have ascended. You are ascending into a higher level of where God wants to take you. He wants to take you to new heights. He wants to take you to new places. And what we're going to do, amen, amen. God wants to in this church, he has a purpose and a plan that is absolutely uh, for you, yes. for each and every one of you. He has a purpose and a plan. And what we want to do is Mike and I receive impartations. The staff of Sid Roth is powerful. He is a powerful preacher and, and uh, evangelist. We got to see him uh, preach to uh, Jewish, uh, Russian Jews. Uh, a salvation message. It was so powerful. We, his staff, 
are extremely powerful. The anointing and the glory of God was on them. And what they did at the end of the sacred meal is each and every one of them not only had a few moments to impart a teaching, but at the end, they imparted the giftings that God gave them. And whatever God showed them, they imparted to all of us. And I told them, I think about it, all of them, I, I can't remember how many of them were, that they each imparted something to us that God wanted us to receive. And I said, Mike, can you imagine? We just received every gifting that they had. We just received it. And we're going to go home, and we're going to bring it back to the church. And we're going to pray for what we have received. And I'm going to explain what it was that we have received in a moment. But I want us to understand that God is going to usher in a new era. A new era. And in this church, if your eyes are open, you will be a part of that new era. He wants to usher in more, more, more. He wants to release a new function for us to go forward and upward. Not only for us to go forward and upward to new levels, but he wants us to pass it on to the next generation, to our kids. Amen? Not only our kids, amen? But the little ones. Yes! Amen? Yay! So they can capture what God is doing. Yes! Amen? So God wants to move. He wants to just breathe into a new unction. And what we have is going to be fresh fire. It's going to be fresh fire. And through that fresh fire, because we need it, folks. This church needs fresh fire. We need fresh fire. And we need to be carriers of the glory. Wherever we go, they were carriers of glory. Amen? And not only that we are carriers of the glory, but that we're going to see signs and wonders. Yes. Healings. And we are going to see things that are just marvelous. We are going to see them. God is going to show us. And I want to do this. I just want to give you my personal testimony of what God did in my life in Israel. We had worship. We went. We didn't get much sleep. We just went and we went and we went. Uh, and one of the speakers that they had that day was uh, Tom Smith. He was down from down south. And we had worship from, oh gosh, the worship. And Tom Smith gave his testimony. And he said he was praying for his church, praying for his church. Pray in first church, nothing was happening. Pray in first church, nothing happened. Pray in first church, he wants God to move. Nothing's happening. So finally he said, okay, God, I'm going to resign. I have nothing, nothing. Uh, I, I'm going to start putting my things in order. He hasn't told anyone yet that he's going to resign and God gives him a vision. So I've never received a vision before. And I see fire on the baptismal, on the water of the baptismal. I see fire on the water. And he said, God, I don't understand. What is that? But he starts baptizing his people. And everyone who gets baptized, no matter who it is, what is it? The power of God is hitting them. There was fresh fire in the baptism. And what he saw was a tremendous move of God with no one missing. Everyone who came out of that baptismal was moved by God, and there was a move of God. Now his team is going to be the ones baptizing us in the Jordan River. And I'm thinking, Woo, yes, Lord. I am healed. I'm going to receive my healing. I am so excited. Mike and I decided that we're going to be baptized anyways uh, because we wanted to be baptized in the Jordan. They had to move the baptism, baptism because it rained the one day the weather was perfect. We, we didn't miss one week, but a 
apparently it ain't rain there, and the waters were going to wash us away, so they had to move for another day. Um, they didn't want us, anyone being lost in the Jordan River at that point. And as Mike was saying, we were the first bus there. I am excited. I am going to see. I am going to see. And I told Mike, you go first because I'm going to take your picture because I don't know what I'm going to be like when I get out of the waters. I'm excited. And when we get there, they look at us and they go, you're, you're going to be baptized together. Well, they go, shoots, I plan on Adam later. The camera down. They didn't even know us from Adam, but they wanted to baptize us together. Mike and I get baptized together. And just as we said, when we came out of the water, the peace, I've experienced peace, but not to this level. The peace permeated the both of us. And we were like rubber. Our arms, our legs, everything, part of us was just rubber. And we were sitting there just, just basking it in. And when I opened my eyes, there was no difference. And I sat there and I thought back, disappointment. And I said, it's okay, God. I know you're going to heal me. But I don't understand, but it's okay. And I was okay. But as time went, and the next day we went to the Garden of Gethsemane, not the Garden of Gethsemane, we went to the tomb uh, where Jesus resurrected. And we were in the garden where the tomb was. And the disappointment began to well up in me to such a degree that I, I was becoming just undone. And I really couldn't manage my emotions. And I was trying to fight back, and the disappointment continued to grow to the point of agony. And I kind of wanted to understand that I don't understand what's going on here. All the joy that we experienced, everything that I have experienced, that I received from you, Lord, right now is just, I, I'm just not making it, but if you stay with me, just stay with me. And we went back to the hotel, and I just spent some time, I went downstairs to spend some time alone, trying to pull myself together. And I came back up to the room, and Mike was there, and I just broke down. And I began to sob from the very depths of my heart. And Mike sat there, and he consoled me, and he prayed over me, and he continued to anoint me, and just pray over me. And I was at the point where God, I, I don't understand. It seems apparent, and, and my problem was is I was looking at my eyesight as the be all and end all. But I was saying, God, I have nothing to offer. Right now, I am at the end of myself. I am broken. I am crushed in spirit right now. I have nothing to offer, and I don't want to go back home like this. I pray that I asked you to be different. I asked you that I would be having a life-changing experience. And here I am. I can't pull myself together. I am broken. Mike began playing a song for me. And all I kept thinking of is, when we fly home, just drop me in the ocean. I'm done. That's it. And as he played the music for me and continued to pray for me, I felt so bad for him because I was breaking his heart too. I was able to pull myself together because we had the Seder meal coming up. And I wanted to be there for the Seder meal. And we walked into the Seder meal and the anointing and the power that was there was absolutely amazing. And as I said, each person that got up there did a teaching, and I was receiving, and I was hearing, and we were worshiping, and it was just the most powerful thing I've ever experienced. And then they all got up, as I said, they imparted anointings on us. And then someone got up, no one in the bus knew who the person was, began to speak in Hebrew, and what he was doing was speaking the Hebrew blessing 
over us. It was the most powerful thing. It's in Hebrew. Next thing I know, I'm on the floor. And I get up. And I enter into a presence of God. I've been in his presence before, but not like this. It was a presence so abiding, so intimate, so loving. And I realized something. Father, you're all I need. If I never get a healing, if I never get anything, I just want to be here. Always in your heart. And I walked out. I went to Israel looking for one thing, but I found something else. Because I had what is called the Gethsemane experience. When Jesus went through the Gethsemane experience, he sweat great drops of blood. And he sweat those great drops of blood for us so that we could be set free from our own will. He broke the curse over us of our own wills. Because he said, Father, not my will, but yours. And because he said that, he gave God permission to do what God had to do in his life. Jesus broke the will, and I realized something. God spoke to me a week earlier before we left. And he said to me, your independence is a hindrance. And I thought to myself, what does he mean by that? What does he, I don't understand. I don't know. I don't know how much more to sell out. I don't know how much more to go. I don't understand. And I struggled with independence because I've lost a lot of independence due to my eyesight. And I've been humbled by that. I've had to ask for help. I've had to release things. I've had to struggle with my loss of independence. So God, I don't get it. But when I landed up broken, when I landed up crushed, my will, my ways, my thoughts were crushed. My will, not my will, Lord, but your will. And I realized something, that when we let our will go, because in Isaiah 53, Jesus went to the cross because we did things our own way. We do things how we think it should be done. We do things how we feel it should be done. And it's not of God, and we think it's of God. And I began to realize that in that Gethsemane experience, what happens in a Gethsemane experience is next is crucifixion. And what was crucified to the cross was my will, my ways, my thoughts. You know what? We can live in the tomb of our own will and think we're perfectly fine, which I thought I was. But I realized I needed to live in my Father's will so that I can ascend to the next level of where he's calling me to be. Amen. So I am going to ascend to that because my will has been crucified. Am I going to be healed? Yes. Yes, I am. Because he already took the healing on the cross 2,000 years ago. I have my healing. Amen. I have my healing. It's going to manifest in his time, his way, and I will heal to him in every part of that way. Amen. We don't want to live in the tools of our own wills, our own pride, our own ways. We want to live in the will of the Father that says, when he calls us to do something, and it's uncomfortable, and we don't like it, we will do it. Because we yield. Totally yield to his will and his presence. Have I come back to you? Transformed? Changed? Yes. I have. I have taken a step 
to a new level. And what Mike and I want to do right now is we want to pray for fresh fire. The impartation that Mike the impartation that Mike and I received together. The impartation that we see we see that they imparted was fresh fire. They imparted fresh fire. They imparted that we would be carriers of the glory, and they imparted that we will walk in signs, wonders, and miracles. So right now, for those of you who want to be changed and transformed, stand up. Are you ready to go to a higher level? Yes. God needs to hear it from your lips. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Amen. Amen. But before we do this, if there's anyone here who has never received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, you can't go to a higher level without knowing the Savior. And you need to open up your heart to Jesus and invite him in. You need to invite the Passover lamb the sacrifice who died for you at the cross and took your sins and nailed them to the cross so that you could ascend with him to higher levels and newer places. So the prayer goes like this, Jesus, come into my heart. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Forgive me. And from this point forward, I yield to you. I give myself to you. And I thank you for my purpose and destiny that you've just given to me right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Mike and I just impart what we have received. By faith, we receive the impartation of fresh fire. Release it right now in the name of Jesus. Fresh, fresh fire. Father, we call down the fire of the Holy Spirit to move upon our hearts. Allow the living waters to spring up within us, O Lord. And begin washing us from the things that we need to be cleansed of. Let those things drop by, Lord. The gambling, the addictions, the pornography, anything, Lord. Our own wills, our own pride. Lord, right now we lay them down before you and we ask for the fresh fire to go forth. And we pray for the glory cloud to come in. And as Dinah said, we will not run from the glory cloud, but we will run to the glory cloud. And we will be carriers of the glory cloud. We will carry out there, Lord, for the hurting, the lost, the broken. Oh, Father, they're dying out there. Father, we're called by you to touch them and to reach them. Father, with the reality of who Christ is, Jesus is not just somebody that we come in, do our duty and leave, but we are transformed and changed by a very real God, a very real presence that we will be taken, taking out there. And Lord, release your signs your wonders. Lord, we thank you for our healings. We thank you for what you're going to do. <coughs> we thank you, Lord, for every need, every bad problem healed, every kidney ailment healed, every function of the brain healed, pain to be healed.
Take those needs, Lord. Amen. Father, I thank you that you loved me too much to give me what I wanted. You gave me what I needed. And Lord, I will receive what I wanted as well because when we ask, we receive. Lord, for everyone who leaves here today, lead with fresh fire. A new function. A new function to go to the next level. And an impartation to our children. Uh, worship that yeah, let's just worship you right now. <laughs> <laughs>